that Jehovah designed to last. So that reading was the beginning of a design by Jehovah, and it was designed to last. So one will not enter into marriage having a fallback plan, divorce when things go wrong. That is lack of commitment. Jason and Jandel, who are committed to their marriage, view it as a permanent bond. And that creates what? A sense of security between you and Jandel. Both of you are confident that whatever happens, no matter what, both of you will honor that union even in difficult times. So that's the design of marriage. So since Jehovah is the God of love, and he is a happy God, honorable marriage, like what you are doing right now, reflect these two qualities of love and happiness. The question is, how can you make your marriage last in love and happiness? We will consider that uh, and looking some scriptures to guide us. For Christian marriage to last, God must be put first in life and his advice followed by both of you. The cornerstone of a secure marriage is loyalty and submission to the one, that is Jehovah, who instituted marriage. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4, around paragraph, uh, verse 9 to 12, uh, marriage is likened to a twofold cord, with both mates united and mutually supported by each other. But take note that love for Jehovah can strengthen the marriage as if that Jehovah were part of that marriage or a party to that marriage. Primarily, if you try to look at that scripture there, that passage is about value of friendship. But take note that marriage is indeed a friendship, a closest of all friendships. As this scripture shows, such a union can provide what? It can provide assistance, it can provide comfort, and it can provide protection from both of you. A marriage is especially strong if it is more than a band between just two people, you and gender. A twofold cord, according to that scripture in this verse, implies that it can be torn apart. But three strands woven together, braided together, will be much harder to tore apart. And you agree with that? So when Jehovah is there, when Jehovah is your prime concern of both you and Jandel, your marriage is like that threefold cord, and it will stay stronger and it will last. Jehovah is a real part of marriage, so the union is very strong indeed. Why can you trust Jehovah for his advice? Why? Because he knows our makeup. He knows our emotional makeup better than any marriage counselor today. Studying the Bible, praying, worshiping together will allow and it will draw you closer to each other and to Jehovah God. A brother in Germany said, whenever our joy has been clouded by personal difficulties or, mis or misunderstandings, the counsel from God's word has helped us deep then develop patience and practice forgiveness. And these qualities are indispensable in a successful marriage. A brother also in Germany, Gerald, who has been happily married for, fifth, or married for 55 years, says, the most vital ingredient in a successful marriage is reading and studying the Bible together. And he adds, Doing things together, especially spiritual things, draws mates much closer to each other and to Jehovah. And you can also do the same. Studying the Bible together help you, Jason and Jandel, to keep Jehovah's standards clearly in mind. It will deepen your spirituality and makes a continued progress on that regard. So what is the secret of a happy, lasting marriage? Both of you will work hard together to keep Jehovah in your marriage. By engaging in spiritual activities together, you are bonded closer to Jehovah and to each other in a happy union in your marriage. Then, your marriage will last in love and happiness according to 
how Jehovah designed it had to be. Let's consider in uh, a few minutes going forward some of the rules of you and Jandel in, in, in the married life. Okay, let's consider first just on your rule. Okay, how can you, Jason, a husband, can gain a depth? respect, not only respect, but deep respect from your wife. I take note that, uh, Jason, you are appointed by Jehovah as a loving head of the family. Husband is the divinely designed inheritance of man. Okay. Headship involves using what? Sound judgment based on the Bible, taking lead in the family in a loving and a kind way. And this includes supplying Jandel or the family with spiritual it includes emotional, recreational needs of your family. In the book of uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 11.3, it was uh, stated there the principle of headship. Okay, we knew that very well. Okay? The head of every man is what? Christ. And the head of Christ, oh no, and the head of the, of, of the woman is what? Is the man. If you try to look at Jason, the context of that scripture, we can see that uh, the head of man is Jesus, there it points out how does Jesus uh, exercise his headship towards men and the congregation. Jesus was never tyrannical or harsh, but was always loving, he is always kind, he is always reasonable, he is always mild-tempered, and Jesus has this quality of a lowliness of heart. So you can also follow Jesus' way of being a head in the congregation. Christian headship does not permit a man to be tyrant or a dictator in the family. And you, Jason, can also follow Christ's uh, headship in this regard. I would like to encourage you to open your Bible, if you have it, if you have it with you, and then uh, try to read this passage of the scriptures uh, in uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, 28, and 29. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, 28, and 29. Yeah, Jason, please, uh, can you read it for us? Uh, use your mic, please. Thank you. In the same way, Husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. A man who loves his wife loves himself. For no man ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cherishes it, just as the Christ does the congregation. Yes, 20, 28 please. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. And 29 also. For no man ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cherishes it, just as the Christ does the congregation. Yes. Did you notice that, that in the same way, the way Christ, the uh, example of being a head in the congregation, you also do likewise to Jandel. Jesus was even willing to give his life for the congregation. He unselfishly put the interest of the congregation first. He was mild-tempered and a source of refreshment to the congregation. So if you try to look at that very carefully, that scripture, despite such a lofty position and such an elevated prospect, the man Jesus was not harsh. He was not unyielding and overly demanding. He was not an authoritarian constantly reminding his disciples that they had to obey him. What can we learn? Jesus was loving and compassionate, especially toward the down children. And Christian husbands also, Jason, you can also show the same to gender. A husband who honors his wife would never assault her physically. Neither would he humiliate or belittle her, causing her to feel worthless. Jundel should not feel that way. Rather, he, you recognizes her value and 
treats her with respect. You show him honor by, by your words and deeds in private.